Welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint, and thanks to Libertarian Party of Sacramento for being our sponsor. Thanks for our usual host, Richard uh, Fields, taking a little break, giving some of us a chance to try something a little different for a change. And thanks in particular for our guest tonight, uh, the lovely and talented Mrs. Pamela Olson, who, among other things, is a crusader for, to protect children in our families and the almost as lovely Mike Giles, who is a teacher uh, who turned away from the dark side. And he could tell us a little bit about that <laughs> in a moment or two here. But uh, uh, I'll start out with a good question. Is propaganda the true ruling power of our country? And I might add that uh, Edward Bernays, the so-called father of public relations, very bright and capable man um, claims that the propaganda is actually what controls our government and our thinking. And uh, among other things, he's the one that was approached by the wine and beer industry uh, at the end of the prohibition area, era and asked, how should we market our products? He told them, in a, of a very uh, effective technique that is still working very well uh, that's making alcohol America's most dangerous drug. His advice was do not talk about the features of your products but associate them with very socially acceptable activities. Show people drinking beer at a family picnic, at a softball game, uh, out in their fishing boat, a glass of wine with a, with a pizza dinner and the like, and uh, it's been effective, hasn't it? It's been overly effective. But and, and I'll, I'll let, let you pick up the uh, the cudgel in a moment. But uh, I was stunned to to read of among those very few people who managed to escape communist North Korea. The vast majority of citizens there, or slaves you might call them, because they're not truly citizens, believe that the leaders are deities endowed with special powers. They think that Kim Jong-un, mm -hmm. I guess it is now, there's a string of them, that they can read people's minds. They know what you're thinking. They know when you are, well, the Santa Claus story, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and it, they control people's lives almost completely. It's amazing that anybody has the, the sense and the, the courage to manage to escape, but they have, yes. In fact, the classic book, I think it's called Escape from Camp 14. Mm -hmm. But what do you think about propaganda? Don't we get a lot of propaganda on, oh, you don't watch television anymore. No wonder you're a free man. Well, uh, yeah, that was the smartest thing that I ever did for myself um, because, um, well, just to jump back in history of ways, um, Joseph Goebbels? Goebbels, yes, Goebbels. Uh, Hitler's propaganda man. Yeah. Learn from Edward Bernays. They yeah. applied those principles. The big lie. And uh, he said that's the most effective. The bigger the lie, the more effective. Because people... Repeat it over and over and over again. Yes. yes. Like everybody has a right to health care. Do they? No. Yes. <laughs> Not and, as far as the Constitution is concerned. You got it. But ethically and morally? because we're so different from the rest of the world. We really are. Americans are unique. We've been told we're not. We've been told we're just like everyone else, and we're not. We're unique. Edward Bernays, who was Freud's nephew. Yes. Okay, Freud's nephew. The cigarette industry wanted to find a way to sell cigarettes to women. So it was the end of the Roaring Twenties, going into the Thirties. We haven't quite hit into World War I yet, and quite literally, this big, splashy campaign came out. Freedom! sticks and then they lined oh. up all these beautiful little flappers oh. and they put inside of their little um stock in that holder yeah. a pack of luckies oh. and if you i believe the campaign read something similar to if you light up a freedom stick you are striking out for women and women's rights so they literally took feminism and smoking yes. smoking of all things yes. cigarettes and the American Medical Association advertised it. Yes. 
Yes. You have a trouble with cough, smoke these cigarettes and you'll <laughs> and we believe more, them. Right? <laughs> Why? Why do we believe them? Because we we're believe gullible. them because they are the power structure. Yes. We're just normal everyday people yes. with normal everyday lives. Yes. I like my normal everyday life. I shouldn't have to be a crusader for families. What the powers that be are doing is absolutely beyond anything our constitution could support. When I hear, let's give Medi-Cal for all, we'd be broke inside of two years well, as a nation. Yes. We'd, we'd be living like Afghanistan. For, for, for one, one of our problems that could be amplified and uh, exaggerated by giving people a blank check to spend on whatever they think is beneficial to their health, they're spending other people's money. Mm -hmm. So there's no mm -hmm. limit to how much they're willing to spend. In fact, with so-called insurance, that's a part of the problem. In fact, there's an author named Ralph Weber whose book is titled How Insurance Ruined Your Health Care. Free markets are far better. Let people spend their money as is most beneficial for them. Don't let me spend your money nor your money. <laughs> yeah. And I'm betting you two remember when there was no such thing as an HMO or PPO. There are people today that are blown away when they hear, there was a time there wasn't insurance. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, there was. And yes. how did we pay for that? Well, um, everybody just did it. Doctors actually came to people's houses and, and things like that. But to buttress both of your points, I heard a doctor being interviewed just this morning. I'm sorry, I can't remember his name. But he said he had had uh, 39 visits between a certain time and a certain time, I think it was an eight hour shift. Mm -hmm. And he asked um, how, ma how many of those were actually needed. And he, he waited for a moment and then he said zero. Cool. People were coming in for sniffles, people were coming in for bee stings, people were coming, they were just, in other words it was free, so to speak, free. Mm. So they just wasted it. They just wasted the doctor's time on nothing. My <laughs> prime example is a um, firefighter medic at a station close to a poverty pocket in, in our community who said he knows personally of a man, probably a homeless, but sort of roams the neighborhood, who in one 24-hour stretch made nine ambulance rides to the emergency department. One day, One nine day? trips to the emergency department. Oh my gosh. It's crazy, isn't it? That's insane. And when I, well, maybe, but when I say crazy, uh, approximately 70% of our regional emergency department beds are occupied by mental health patients who need assistance. They're right. in trouble, right. but they're sitting waiting for placement or for treatment. And uh, fortunately, I have a friend who's uh, going to be starting his uh, postgraduate training uh, <laughs> later this year mm -hmm. at uh, Walter Reed Hospital oh, wow. and he's going into psychiatry and there's so much to be learned, so much that we don't totally understand yet. But I can offer some good book recommendations. <laughs> there's a book titled um, An Unquiet Mind by K. Redfield Jameson. Great book. Now, K. Redfield Jameson is a professor of psychiatry at Johns Hopkins University, mm -hmm. formerly at UCLA, mm -hmm. who herself <coughs> had manic depressive disease mm -hmm. and depicted it. Brings tears to my eyes just thinking of how tragic that was and how she, she, she confessed she had tried to kill herself at least once because it was intolerable. Mm -hmm. And that's understandable, uh, but she was able to find competent guidance and a combination of psychotherapy and medications. Either one by itself is insufficient. It requires a, a good balance yeah, of that. Both, and, yeah. uh, and I think in a way, well, my medical school class the psychiatrist looked at us and was telling us about some mental aberrations. Mm -hmm. He says, I see a lot of worried looking faces out there. He says, don't worry about it. The seeds of mental illness reside in all of us. And as long as they're, they don't dominate our lives, then we're all right. We keep things in balance. Mm -hmm. It's when suddenly nothing else 
appears on the horizon, life seems hopeless that we're in real trouble. Uh, yeah, that people sink into despair quite before they really realize it, so it's, they're already there by the time they realize it. So, And we know. have an example. I, it, this is really sad, and I, I don't wish to despair, <laughs> disparage anybody, but uh, we had a suicide by police mm. within, re with, within the past year in Sacramento. Oh, yes. And, and the people that are out um, protesting clearly did not look at the evidence. It was very clear. This was a, young, a very troubled young man. He had committed some legal offenses, and he was fearful of going back to jail. And he announced, this won't happen. I'd rather die than go back to jail. And despite all the medications he had on board, that was not fatal, but he had to, where's the, he had to do this to yeah. somebody like Mike who was, yeah, kind of in a yeah. dark backyard or right. something. It yeah. was it was just a setup oh, for it's, that, and it's, it's terrible, just a tragedy terrible. for everybody. Tragedy. And I have met, I have met uh, Stabante, that young man's brother. I think highly of him. He is also he is troubled because of what happened to his brother, but that's sure. understandable. Sure. Who wouldn't be? Who wouldn't be? Yeah. Yes. Well, imagine watching uh, your children, and you can do nothing about it, and your children are ripped out of your home by strangers. Tell armed us more. strangers. Yes, you're telling okay. us about something. Uh, literally, uh, these parents come down with a part of trauma syndrome or a form of PTSD, along with situational. Now, situational is exactly what it sounds like, gentlemen. Situation means until the situation resolves, you're going to have these certain triggers, or we're going to see that you're more anxious, or you're traumatized, or you have evidence of PTSD. The minute the situation resolves, then all of a sudden, the situation of anxiety, trauma, PTSD, is alleviated. So we already understand, on a very visceral level, just through 45 years of Mondale Act, 1974, which I wish Senator Mondale was still alive, just so I could give him a good <laughs> shake or two. Um, and he understood that what he was doing was creating in his Mondale Act of 1974, creating CAPTA, which is the Child Abuse and Prevention Act. It was only meant to be up for 15 to 20 years at most because of no contest divorce, which my generation got to enjoy. Everybody's parents split up. Everyone played musical parents. Okay. Now we have come to a point where in 1974, we can't have a bunch of newly wanting to divorce couples flood our civil court system. So the family law court system was developed and devised. It is not constitutional. These are legislatively appointed grant boards, much like a PTA, 501c3. They receive Title IV funds, and there are eight, eight main industries that feed off of the backs of the most innocent among us, our children. Uh, and if they're under five, they get 10 times the amount of money than for a child over five. A child under 12 will go for more than a child that's over 12. Yes. We lose more children to sex trafficking right out of group homes and foster care. Sometimes some of these CWS workers, Child Welfare Services, it is CPS's true name, so I name it by its true name. These children are trafficked, and the numbers are hidden from the American people. So is the damage that a lying CWS worker, most of them are not social workers. These are people who have had 36 hours of training. I call them French fry makers, oh, because that's, that's sad, about where their skill level is. And they're trained, this is what we want you to do. This is how we expect you to behave. And now they've become so powerful and strong because it's almost 45 years, I believe September will be 45 years. Mr. Giles is now being asked to be a meter maid and make him a mandated reporter if he sees anything suspicious or if he knows a child is not vaccinated. He could now lose his teaching license. I'm a mandated reporter as a retired nurse. So if I don't call in, if I'm in a position where I'm dealing with families and children, and I know children aren't vaccinated, or let's say the family um, decided to choose a different religion than where uh, the adult parents started with in their own household, that can generate a hotline tip that will bring CWS and two armed sheriffs to your home, and they will take your children at gunpoint over an allegation that no one has to leave their name, leave their phone number, all they have to do is leave a filthy allegation. 
any allegation will do. That I've had a family of five beautiful children taken away in Ohio. It took me six months and a day to get them back. And that's when I found out six months and one day equals one full year of funding per child for that budget. And it goes right into our state. In 2016, California brought in over $200 billion between the eight industries and off the backs of our children. So while people are crying about the 2,000 children that have been taken in 2016 and 2017 at the border, 2,000 total, 2,000 American children are taken every two to three days by CWS. And then parents are literally put through a form of help that I can only describe as the lake of fire. And it doesn't matter which end of the lake you end up, they're gonna make you walk the whole thing and you are a completely changed person by the time you come out of it. It that is the is worst awful. form of red pill I can and, imagine. And that, and that money is a real incentive, isn't it? Oh, it absolutely is the basis. So you're, in, in 2018, 90.3% of every case open nationwide was closed and unfounded because you're guilty until proved unfounded. It's an unconstitutional court. Guilty until proven in innocent. That until sounds, unfounded. That sounds like the case against our current president, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. Yes. Or income tax, the IRS. Absolutely. Where you, you have to prove that you didn't do this and you did what we were supposed to do and the like. And it's real sad because the opportunity is to put children into some decent families. And I'd like to think that there are some Oh, they're foster absolutely. families are doing a fine job. In fact, yes. we have, I have extended family where uh, the, the, the husband and wife were genetically unable to raise healthy children that, that weren't surviving. And they uh, adopted a family from Africa from a, an orphanage. The parents weren't dead. The families had a huge, huge number of children, that right. more than they could care for. So right. they put these three children mm -hmm. into an orphanage and they would make regular visits. They were still part of the family, but living apart. And fortunately, this couple in Texas brought them here to the United States. Mm. They are just beautiful. Um, a pair of twins and a younger brother. And they're, they're young teens now. And uh, I just love uh, oh, <laughs> keeping track. I haven't seen them since my since our daughter's wedding several years back. But uh, uh, fact, well, I'm sure Mr. Giles will probably tell you, as well as I could tell you, any more. You actually are re hesitant to call the people you know you're supposed to call. Now it wasn't even until a few years ago that I understood there was a problem which is what yes. started Save Our Children in the first place Good in 2016. You, you can um, say that again because this is your crusade. Save Our Children, save, right? Save yeah. Our Children because any child CWS takes, that's my child. That's your part of your human they're family. It's part, part of, of your human family. They're all part of our world, aren't they? Right, yeah. so whether you're an educator, a nurse, a wonderful doctor, literally these are our future. Without our children, we have no future. Thank goodness there are very good people out there. Um, unfortunately, those that run through CWS, they are finding and they are flocking to private church where they have the foster care set up so that they know Good. that they're doing everything proper and right and they're only receiving abused children. Many of these children are healthy, beautiful children. That's what everyone wants to adopt, abused children or not. So when you're only getting yes. 5 to 10 percent abuse in this country, and I know there's got to be more than 5 to 10%, because my pedo sadism and child sex trafficking numbers are through the roof. And they're coming, 75% of them, out of foster and group home. I'm curious. So, Go ahead, Mike. You had something to question or. Yeah, comment. well, so you're um, saying that that entity, which we know of as Child Protective Services, is actually. Um, involved a money making and, and scheme. getting paid money from all sorts of different in other words they're motivated from the original idea of trying to help kids it's been perverted into something terrible that's pulling innocent kids out of innocent families correct to make money correct but not everyone okay. i hope i'm sure there's some good people there are system. i have They're met some families. incredible people i've met some incredible foster i've met some incredible group home workers i've met some great social workers 
actual social workers for two, mm-hmm. four, and six year. Six year is an MSW. Unfortunately, most of the case workers are not social workers. Oh. They barely have a high school diploma or maybe some junior college. But it, that's not who's taking your child out of your home. No. These are meter maids. These are French fry makers. Quite literally, people who should be making your French fries at your favorite restaurant. I have a sad oh. commentary about this family with the, the, the orphans from Africa. Those are very dark skinned children, as you could imagine. Yeah. And we were told that when the mom had the three, when they were younger, out in public, there were some people that would look at this pigment deficient mom, like us, mm-hmm. you and you, and I don't see us as anything other than the human race. Absolutely. I don't Absolutely. Like yeah. That's disgusting. But, but what's the sad is if you do disagree with certain political viewpoints, yeah. you are racist, racist, yes. racist. And in my view, those people making that accusation must be the true racists in themselves. But, but at any rate, in public with these dark-skinned children, some people will look and they see it, the positive side of it. And others are questioning, well, why you yank these children out of their natural culture? And isn't this, aren't you damaging their self-esteem and adopting them? I don't think so. I would love I don't for think their self-esteem has hurt one bit. To be brought into a loving home. I don't think I'd <laughs> yeah. make it. The way they live in Africa and the way they have to subsist and survive every day, I certainly couldn't survive it. No. So there, anyone that can come through that, that is that is a stellar human being and certainly above yes, and I, I, someone I, I would consider my better, someone yes. I could learn from. And I believe that the church had a role in running the orphanage and arranging the adoptions. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mm-hmm. recently finished reading a book uh, authored by Robert Guest. I'm reading everything all the time. <laughs> it's titled yeah. The Shackled Continent. It is about Africa, mm-hmm. the most civilized nation in the continent of Af- Africa is South Africa. Uh, but it's suffering. It's going the way of um, uh, Robert Mugabe's uh, mm. Uh, nation where it was a racist nation because the apartheid, because yeah. the white nationalists were superior to the black natives. And now the black natives think they are superior to the white nationalists, and some of those white farmers are getting abused. Uh, Zimbabwe is a mess. Uh, South Africa is still a shining light. And uh, my uh, what I laughingly call my African-American daughter-in-law. <laughs> she came from South Africa. She's too as pigment deficient, but she's a wonderful woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a new mom, too. What oh, exciting. Grandchild yeah. number 15. I love it. Great. Wow. Great. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. But uh, uh, next week, uh, but she and my son and the new baby uh, will visit her family in South Africa. Beautiful. And I think that's a wonderful thing to do. It absolutely yeah. is. Yeah. And really, we should take better care of our future. Educate them, show them, teach them. Yes. Take the phones away. Turn the stupid TV off. It's the idiot box. That's what my grandmother used to call it the idiot box. Be Pop, careful, love. My that. wife might see this. She <laughs> just loves, he has her series and she follows oh, the, I know. All the Mentally Chicago all Fire oh, and yes. the Residence. We need the escape. And, and yeah. the blacklist and uh, and I, I find unless you're watching something that can edify you if you're just looking for entertainment fine do that on a Friday night for one or yeah. two hours the rest of the time you should be outside enjoying your neighbors how many of us even know our neighbors how many of us even know who live next door to us much less good, a good house point. or two down yeah that's that's a, that you is know, a get good outside. point yeah I, people I'm, don't go outside anymore yeah I've read about people who um, like d- unhooked from the NFL just to sit there drinking beer on Sundays, and they started uh, <laughs> meeting with their neighbors, and and um, doing things with their kids, and now they're having so much fun and actually doing things, working on cars and showing their kids how to do stuff, building hot rods with their kids, all that kind of stuff, and their their life is now full, and they don't need to just sit in front of a TV, um, yes, uh, yes, watching football games. And you sure. made a, you made a point about. Um, Edward Bernays' recommendation about the alcoholic beverages, and people do not realize, and I'm sure they're offended when I, when I point out that alcohol 
is America's most dangerous drug. It promotes cancer, for one thing. It is toxic to every legal living cell in our body. Oh. And it has other effects. Uh, but there was an incident reported in the local news recently of two men outside a bar had an argument. They shot each other to death. <gasps> Bang! Two of them dead. <laughs> oh, one gee. of them dead on the scene and the other one died in the hospital shortly thereafter. And, oh, Dar uh, Darwin was smiling on that one. Well, that's one way of looking at it, but uh, <laughs> I'm not quite it's so sanguine. It's very sad, though. It, it really is, is it's sad. definitely. But it's not up to us to be our brother's keeper. You're right. You have to take the initiative to self-care. Yeah, you have to. To have a moral code. Uh, Mr. Giles has told me so many wonderful stories of his upbringing that I don't even remember a lot of that because I was too young. But where, the way it used to be, to what you and I and Mr. Giles understand today, is such a vast difference. It's like a completely different planet. No, you would never so, know this is the oh, same America that I grew up in in the 60s. You would never know. It certainly isn't the America either of you grew up in. Yeah, I'm a little bit older than you, I'm sure. Oh, just, just, just. Oh, uh, enough. Yes, I can, I can recall. Friends and I would get on the bus. We'd go into downtown Detroit and roam around to have lunch at a deli and visit the sporting goods stores mm -hmm. and the department stores get on the bus and go back home again. Several years later, you would go down there with the body, an armed bodyguard. Right. Just that bad. And, well, and if you let your children do that now, if they're under the age of 18, oh, you're an abusive parent. We gotta come pick up your kids and we gotta give you parenting classes well, yeah. and more parenting classes and more parenting classes. Oh wait, we can only do four parenting classes. <laughs> now let's do some individual therapy that the CWS worker actually gets to hear all about your private sessions. It's become a mad, mad world and not the good comedy movie. <laughs> Just a really absolute out of yeah, I think you're, it's you're, mind. It sounds like you're talking about buildings full of bureaucrats. <laughs> You know, that would be DC. There's plenty of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. In fact, we, we have about one minute left. Yeah, we're getting the signal. And okay. I've looked at the clock. Um, a friend who worked in state government and retired several years ago had insights into what goes on. She is adamant. State of California has twice as many employees as it needs to do anything productive. She said, I know of departments where they play golf every Thursday or Wednesday afternoon or whatever it is, and who, who knows, who cares? There's a lot of nepotism, but uh, anyway, we're coming to the end. Thanks for joining us, folks. Um, come back again. You can see us on uh, uh, Comcast Cable, Channel 17, uh, 8 o'clock. Oh, thank you. Thursday. Thank you. Noon Friday, 4 a.m. Saturday. That's John Cameron's favorite time for watching the show. Okay. I know I do. Thanks to our guests again.